Welcome to Learning Lua. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at using modules in the Lua scripting language. You're going to see that modules are an incredible, useful, and powerful tool. Modules allow you to create your own library of useful subroutines or functions that you use on a regular basis and then easily include them inside of your application, all with just single command of requiring that module. Modules return a single table that is then useful inside of your routine. When you are doing a require and loading a module, the .lua extension is assumed. Lua scripting language requires that all modules be written in the Lua scripting language. And let, just one final note, modules, a collection of modules is referred to as a package. If you do a search on the internet, you'll find many places that are hosting lots of different types of packages that have already been created to speed up your programming. So here I've created a simple module. It is, I've named it mymodule.lua and it is just simply starts out by declaring a table, I'm calling that table sample, and I've created two simple functions with that table, a add function that receives two numbers and a high that says high based upon what string has been passed to it. The add returns the addition of the two numbers. Re the high will return high concatenated with the name. Final part of any module always must be a return and the name of the table that is being returned to the original calling routine. So let's take a look at an application that makes use of this simple module. Here I've got my module. There are two different ways that you can add a module and utilize a module inside of your main program. Here's one method. I'm going to set up a variable called myMod and set it equal to the require of my module. So my module's table is being loaded into my mod. My mod is now storing that table as well as the functions that are a part of that table. So if I do a print my mod dot high, passing it the letter A, it will return high A, which as we saw is the what is returned from that particular function. So we're returning high with a space concatenated with whatever was passed to it, in this case the letter A. Second, we've got my mod and I'm adding two numbers. So I'm doing calling my mod dot add, passing it the numbers one and five, and we are returned six. So that's one way that we can use and require. Typically you will find in most uh, scripting languages or SDKs that are using the Lua scripting language, it is, you can use either approach. You can either require the external mod or you can go ahead and name it to its own. I'm thinking of the Corona SDK where we use the uh, physics module and we can require physics. We usually set it equal to physics so that we can then easily use any of the internal parts and pieces that are associated with it. So let, let me point out a little distinction then on that. We've got my mod, which is the variable that I named it, dot high. But over here, this is named sample dot high. So the name that I use for my variable replaces whatever the name of the table is that's what's storing the table that is returned. The second approach that you can use inside of your application is to just simply require it and not set it equal to an application. So here I've got require my module and it's just simply being loaded. If you're using this approach inside of your application, you can go with calling it by whatever you named that module or whatever the name of the variable is inside the module and then the extension. So sample.high passing it the letter b returns high b. Passing sample.add passing it two numbers returns that number as well. Both methods work equally well. The first method where we are doing setting it equal to my mod gives me the advantage of I no, don't need to worry about what my module's table name is that's set equivalent to my mod. So a little bit of an advantage there. Modules are incredibly powerful, allow us to do some really neat things approaching object-oriented programming, which uh, Lou is not technically a object-oriented scripting language, but utilizing the tables and modules this way, we can simulate a lot of the capabilities of object-oriented programming in the development of our app or our game. And we'll talk about that 
in future tutorials. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 